Father, we make that our confession this morning. That only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. There is no one that can be compared to you. And we are asking that in the name of Jesus, you would glorify yourself in today's service. That Lord, your word would come forth with power. It would come forth with accuracy. And that Lord, it will come forth with clarity. That everyone who hears is blessed. And the name of Jesus is glorified. I ask that Lord, you will speak through my lips. That Lord, oh God in heaven, you would make your word known. Grant me utterance in the name of Jesus. And let the name of Jesus be magnified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be graciously seated in God's awesome presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. For those who are here in the church, rapture has not happened. Praise the name of the Lord. So just in case you think rapture has happened, I were the ones left. No. <laughs> As a church, you know, it's always good for us to consider the interest of the entire community. And so for that reason, we suggested that members will stay at home. Nevertheless, we'll be able to bring God's word to your house in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nevertheless, it's a wonderful time for us to gather here once again. For us to be blessed. And so please join me even as we open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 61. We are reading from verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 61 from verses 1 to 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah 61 from verses 1 to 3. Praise God. Okay, for those of us who are home, please don't be distracted. This is time for service as well. And so please, everyone, let us read together one to go. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn in Zion. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. At this morning, we are carrying on from where we left off last week. And the title of today's sermon is Power to Excel, Part 2. Power to Excel, Part 2. Praise the name of the Lord. And so just to give a, a brief recap, for us to be able to capture God's mind as he relates to the subject. Last week, I began to share with us that when we look at the scriptures, one of the things that the Bible is described as is that the Bible is a mirror. Praise the name of the Lord. And just like the object of a mirror, the idea is to give you a reflection of what is before the mirror. And the idea behind that is so that you are able to have a true assessment of yourself to determine whatever needs to be adjusted and to make the necessary adjustments. Praise the name of the Lord. However, you understand that more importantly, the idea of the mirror, because the Bible regards that word, that the word of God is a mirror. When you look at 2 Corinthians 3 from verses 18, the Bible says that, but we all, with what? Unveiled faces, beholding what? As in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as what well by the Spirit of the Lord. I want to make you understand that God's idea for you as a Christian is that when you look at the scripture, you must first and foremost see Jesus. Hallelujah. 
The Bible said that Jesus met the Pharisees and he said that what? The scripture, that you search the scripture thinking that you would have life in it. But the scripture is talking about what? Me. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when you look at the Bible, the first thing you should expect to see is the person or the personality of the person called what? Jesus. And the idea behind that is that when you look at that mirror, you begin to adjust yourself by the help of the Holy Spirit to conform to the same image. That's why Paul was saying that what? But we all with what? Unveiled faces. Beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord. And are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so, aside from making adjustments through looking at the mirror, more importantly, what the Bible does is to show you what you look like. Is to show you the will of God for your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So perhaps if you are ever confused about what is God's will for me, the Bible should lay or to relieve you of any fear you, or concern you may have pertaining to God's will. But I said that if there's anything that will limit us from becoming God's best or from us fulfilling God's idea for our lives, I said that it was going to be pride. Simply because it is prideful for the Bible to show you what you need to change and you say, oh, this is who I am. I cannot change. After all, I am who I am. Either you accept me that way or not. That is simply what a stance of pride. And we understand that the Bible says, if you look at what the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah 8, sorry, from verse 17 to 19. This was the Moses, the of Israel, and they said that then you say in your heart that my power and my might have gained me this wealth. And he said that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who giveth you what? power to get wealth. In other words, what Moses was trying to make them understand is simply this. Every single thing that you are is simply because God allowed it. Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, without God, you and I can do nothing. The book of Acts says that it is in him that we live. It's in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. Jesus was even telling the disciples in John 15, he says, abide in me and I in you, for without me, what? You can do nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. And so perhaps you have ever nursed the idea that you are who you are simply because you are beautiful or because you are intelligent. I'm here to reawaken you to the consciousness that everything that you are is simply because God allowed it. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we're looking at the subject of power to excel. In other words, just as um, Moses was saying that you shall what? Remember the Lord your God for it is him that giveth you power to get wealth. Making them understand that it is not by desire that you get wealth. There is an empowerment that comes upon you that enables you then to create wealth. If you are going to get wealth the godly way. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the truth is I want you to know that if you want to make money there is many ways to make money. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you hear so many people make the argument, but just someone like Jeff Bezos doesn't know God. He's not a Christian, but yet he has money. There are different routes to money. Praise the name of the Lord. But there is only one way. Praise God. The acceptable way. And so here, it was saying that it is God who giveth thee power to do what? To get wealth. And so just as he relates to the subject of wealth, when it comes to the power to excel, you must understand that this idea of excelling was God's idea in the first place. Praise God. Because some of us may have that idea that, oh, maybe it is God's idea for me to be a failure. Absolutely not. I said it here many years ago or many months ago, even when I was preaching one sermon, and I said that the glory of the creator is in the creation. Praise the name of the Lord. The glory of the creator is in what? The creation. Every time you see a Tesla, you know, yesterday, 
I was with a friend of mine. He drives a Tesla. And so he wanted to give me something from his car. And so he, my car was parked apart about, say, give or take, about 50 steps from his own car. And so he opened the boot and forgot to close the boot. And so he, he came to my car and was dropping the stuff. And all of a sudden, he just tapped on his phone. Open, and the boot closed. Praise the name of the Lord. And I said, don't worry. I'm humble enough to know that you have a Tesla. Praise the name of the Lord. But what I'm trying to say is that at that point in time, the glory has gone to Elon Musk. Because that's his creation. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that the same principle applies to you. God's creation. That every time you are excelling, every time you are excellent or progressing or succeeding, it is God's idea. Because what? Then you are bringing glory and honor to him. Can you imagine a parent who would give birth to a child and from the day the child was born, the mother or the father would say, you know what? My desire for you in life is to be a failure. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm trying to make you understand God's mind. Praise God. And so first and foremost, the idea of success or excelling was originally God's idea. When we go to the Bible in Genesis 1, it says what? Be fruitful and do what? Multiply. Let's even eliminate the biological aspect of it. That your hands would bear fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you look at Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the message version. It says, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you what? The future that you hope for. Praise God. The future that you do what you hope for. And guess what? The best idea you have for your future is not compared to what God has in mind for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because remember I said, it is God's desire that you excel and succeed in every endeavor. Because by so doing, you are doing what? You're bringing glory to the one who created you. Hallelujah. And so it is God's idea. And like the Bible says here, that what? That the plans of God is to give you what? The future that you do what you hope for. But when you look at Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Bible gives us more clarity into this statement. It says that what? And to him. Who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can do whatever imagine or think? That tells me that even if you have an imagination of how your future should look like, God is telling you this morning that that idea, what I have in mind, is better than what you have in mind. And the reason why this is important is because then you will now come to the point of just being humble enough to say, you know what, Lord, let me follow you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've said it here over and over again. There is nothing that will happen to the believer that is for his disadvantage. Now, whatever may happen, it may be bad, in our eyes it may be bad, but God has a system of using that particular thing to what? To accomplish what he has in mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you realize that to excel, the dictionary says that what? It is to do something very well. Or be what? Highly skilled and better than most others. Praise God. Remember, we're talking about what? The power to excel. And the dictionary is now telling us that when we're talking about excelling. That it is what? To do something what? Very well or be highly skilled and be better than most others. Praise the name of the Lord. If we were to break this statement down a little bit, you begin to realize that it is not for competition. But remember, at the end of the day, it's to bring glory to the owner. Praise God. You see, because when you understand this, as kingdom siblings, we have no right to compete. There is something that God has called you to do. 
that even if I attempt it, I would never be able to do it to the degree that you are able to do it. Simply because what? There is something that God uniquely designed you to accomplish. And so he says that what? It is to do something better than what you usually do. And I said that just like every kingdom reality, there are certain protocols that must be observed and to excel is not any different. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. And so here now, we begin to see from the anchor text that we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 61 from verses 1 to 3. Isaiah here had a dream or a prophecy or a vision. Praise God. And the, in the vision, he was telling us about what? Jesus in prophecy. Praise God. Isaiah was trying to give, remember I said that what? When you look at the Bible, the Bible first and foremost is to show you who? Jesus. Hallelujah. And by virtue of the things you see in him, as the word of God is a mirror, you are supposed to be what? Changed or conformed into that image. And so Isaiah in prophecy began to see what God had in mind for Jesus. And he says that what? Then he says that what? That the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Praise God. Because the Lord has what? Anointed me to do what? To preach. Praise the name of the Lord. And I said it here last week. That when it comes to the subject of having the power to excel. That is what we call what, that power we're talking about is what we call what, the anointing. Praise God. It is the anointing, it is the engracement, the enablement to execute a certain task. Praise God. And so here, Prophet Isaiah started off by giving us that understanding about Jesus Christ. And he began to highlight the mind of God concerning creation. Praise God. Because we see here that what? By virtue of what Christ came to accomplish, he now became a template. Praise God. A template for anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's look at the, that particular scripture. The Bible says that what from the verse 1 of it, Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says that what the spirit of the Lord is what upon. That's the key word there. Is what upon me. Praise God. In other words, it says what? It's upon me because what? He has what? Anointed me to do something. In other words, if we're going to reverse engineer that statement. In other words, if the anointing was not there, I don't have the ability to do it. Am I making sense? That if the anointing was not there, I don't have the ability to do it. We saw this graphically represented in Matthew 3 verse 16. When John the Baptist went to baptize Jesus Christ, the Bible said that what? And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of the Lord descending like a dove and alighting where upon him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we see that from that moment onwards, that was the coronation of Jesus Christ to end back on his assignment on the earth. Praise God. And what was the reason why Christ was anointed? Why was he anointed? Very quickly. Number one, he was anointed to preach good tidings to the poor. In other words, he was anointed to bring good news to those who were despondent. Praise God. He said that what? He has sent me to do what? To heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim the liberty to the captives. The opening of the prison doors to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn in Zion. To console those who mourn in Zion. And he says to give them what? Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for, the, for mourning, and the garment of praise for what? The spirit of heaviness. Let me tell you this. Everything that is a human challenge 
is solved by everything listed here. Everything. Everything. The entirety of humans' challenges are solved by what? These, all these things that Christ came to accomplish. Praise the name of the Lord. But the question is, why then? Why then? Because we are going somewhere with this understanding. Why then was he anointed? And I came to the conclusion in that Isaiah 63 verse, Isaiah 61 verse 3. He said that what? That the reason why Jesus came to do all these things is that what? That the people who he did it for may be called what? The trees of righteousness. The what? The planting of the Lord. Why? Because what? God wants to be glorified. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what? So that means every time you come to a healing crusade and somebody comes on a wheelchair and leaves standing, God is being glorified. Every time you come to a place, someone, for example, is struck with depression or whatever it, it may be, and that person in that encounter is able to be delivered. The Bible said that what? God is doing it. That the reason why he's doing it is because he wants to bring glory to himself. Praise the name of the Lord. And so then you begin to understand that what? The essence of the anointing is to enable the believer to execute tasks that will bring glory to the Lord. In other words, it's almost like as if God enjoys. That's why you will, you will see that the Bible will say that what? That the praises of our, it said, let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. That God has engineered everything to every single day. Just give him all the glory. That's why he said that when I consider the works of your hands, that what? That I just keep on wondering what a mighty God that you are. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so you see here that what? If you and I, that what God is trying to accomplish here rather, is to equip us with every ability that when we begin to do those things, it begins to bring him honor and glory. Now look at what the Bible says in the book of Matthew 5 verse 14. Matthew 5 verse 14. Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he says that what? You are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. He says, no, do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but a lampstand, and it gives what? Light to those who are in the house. But he says what? Let your light do what? Shine before men that they may what? See it. And do what? That they may see your good works and therefore do what? Glorify God in heaven. And so anytime you don't do anything that glorifies God, you think God is happy? Praise the name of the Lord. Anytime you are unable to do something that brings God glory, you and I are misrepresenting his nature. Because the Bible said that what? That out of each and every one of us, something glorious must come forth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so that conclusion makes me understand that what? The anointing that God gives is to put us on, is to put him on display. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at what the Bible says concerning Jesus. We are talking about what? The Spirit of God upon Jesus. Acts 10 verse 38. The Bible says that what? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With what? With the Holy Spirit and what? With what? Power. And he did what? He now went about doing what? Doing good. And what? Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And the Bible said that what? For God was with him. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm trying to make you provoke to the point where if my life does not bring God glory, is I must do something about it. Praise God. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. And I like how the Amplified Version puts it. It says, now there was a certain man among the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a ruler, a leader, an authority among the Jews. He says, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain that you have come from God as a teacher. 
And it says, for no one can do what? These signs, these wonder works, these miracles, and produce what? These proofs that you do unless God is with him. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, this is for those who are, this is for those who have given their life to Jesus Christ. When we give our lives to Christ, the Bible says that what we receive the Holy Spirit, who is what the assurance or the guarantee of our salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I think it was Kenneth Hagin that wrote the book that said, Spirit within and Spirit upon. Now, the reason for the spirit within is for us to act like Christ in terms of character. Praise the name of the Lord. But it is possible for you to have the spirit within and the spirit is not upon. In other words, you are not yet been given the enablement to begin to do those assignments that God has had in store for you for you to bring him glory. Praise God. And so I said that what you cannot effectively live out the essence of your purpose or your life without the anointing. And the only agency, the only channel, the only source through which the anointing comes is what? Through the person of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is what makes us different from every religion. Praise God. If you consider Islam, Buddhism, and the rest, there are tokens of Christianity in all of them. Praise the name of the Lord. But the differentiator is what? The Holy Spirit. And the reason why is simply because God wants to put himself on display. And I said that to attempt to do life without the anointing of God is to live what? A frustrated life. Praise God. To attempt to do life without the anointing is what? Is to live a frustrated life. If you're a mother or you're a wife, you need the anointing of God. Because you see, by the time you consider taking care of children, catching for your husband, keeping your home in order, and yet pursue your career, you'll be exhausted. Praise God. But there are people who do it with ease and don't even know that they are going through, that they are doing anything at all. What makes the difference? It's the same 24 hours of, of the day that you and I have. But what? They have understood the potency of the anointing. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who are in ministry and yet they are in full time. In full time ministry. They have full time jobs. They have, they are full time dads, full time everything, but yet, None of these things is lacking attention. How are they doing it? It is the anointing of God that enables. Because you see, by flesh shall no man prevail. The Bible says in Zechariah that it's not by power, not by might, but by what? My spirit, the Bible says, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is why Jesus was very clear to his disciples. The Bible said that what? In Acts of the Acts, Acts, Chapter 1, from verses 4. He says, and being assembled together with them, he did what? He commanded, he did not suggest. Because if it was a suggestion, that means you can take it or you leave it. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible said that what? He commanded them to do what? Not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, that you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with what? The Holy Spirit, not many days from now, and you shall what? Receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has do, done what? Come upon you. Now you ask yourself, did they not have the Holy Spirit from the beginning? Praise God. They did. Because a portion of John says that what? After having preached to them, he told to them what? Receive what? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. But here he was given a different dimension to the workings of the Spirit that he said to them that what? But you shall receive power. When what? The Holy Spirit has done what? 
has come upon you and then you are able to do what? To witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Why do you think you are willing to die for the gospel? Do you think it's passion? Praise the name of the Lord. Do, do you I think it's passion? Passion can only get you so far. To the point where you are saying that if I die, I die. Praise God. I remember I read a story of a lady, Corrie Ted Boone, that she was a very young girl at the time and she was asking her father that, you know, I've heard about Christian martyrs and we are Christians. So what if one day we come to the point where we have to lose our lives for the sake of the gospel? That at this point in time, I can't imagine me dying. She was being honest as a little girl. And the dad gave her a very interesting analogy. The dad told her and said, when we were coming to this train station, did you ever wonder whether you will be able to pay for the fare or not? And she said, I never gave thought to it. Why? Because what? Your dad had the money. All that needed to happen was when we got to the counter and they demanded the payment. All I, all I did was to release the money and I paid for, for the train fare. And that is how God is going to supply that grace. That if it be, that when that time comes, because you see, Peter thought he was passion. When Jesus asked him and said, do you love me? He said, ah, I mean, I love you. I will die for you. Praise God. I'm sure some guys have said that to ladies before, you know, that I will do anything for you. Praise God. All of a sudden, little sickness comes in your life and the guy is AWOL. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you realize that passion can only get you so far. It is the spirit that enables you to go through it, regardless of the end. Hallelujah. And so Jesus understood this when he told the disciples. He said, don't even try to do the assignment I have called you upon. Until what? The Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so as I begin to conclude, I said, then what if the delay and the setbacks you are facing is because you started too early before the anointing came? What if the frustration and failure you are experiencing is due to the lack of the anointing? Praise God. What if the reason for the lack of results, you know, because if it was based on hard work, Peter and John said, Master, we have toiled all night. We know how to catch fish. Based on experience, the best time to catch fish is at night. And we did all this all night and yet we have nothing to show for it. Because what? The anointing was not there. But they said, nevertheless, at thy word, at thy command, because you are with us, the entire creation was just obey. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that Perhaps the reason why you're not being productive in your chosen endeavor is simply because the anointing to do it is not there. My brothers and my sisters, there is something called the power to do what? To excel. That in your academics, for example, for, for those who are in the university and are watching from home, it is possible for you to be a full-time worker in church and still excel in your career. I'm telling you possibilities in God because I, I know a plethora of people that will say, oh, you're carrying this Jesus on your head. But yet, when it came to their professional lives, they were not lacking. Praise the name of the Lord. That it is possible for you to be a man of one wife and yet you will excel in your marriage. You need not look outside. I'm telling you the possibilities of God. It is called what? The power to excel. So when Moses was telling them, and you shall not forget the Lord thy God, for it is he who does, who does what? Who giveth thee power to get wealth. And for us this hour, that there is a God who giveth people what? The power to excel. Because that is what you now call what? The unction to function. Praise the name of the Lord. What are the details of the anointing? In other words, what does the anointing do? What are those things? Or what are those ingredients that make up the anointing? 
I will share this and then we'll round up. Because next week we'll be looking at how then do I get it? If I now know what it is, how, how am I able to walk in the reality of this anointing? Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11 from verses 1 to 2. Because remember, Jesus is our template. Every single thing that he was able to do and accomplish, he did it as a man like you and I. But he had an advantage. And that advantage is also available to you and I. That advantage is the person of the Holy Spirit. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1. It says, they shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. We're talking about Jesus here. It says that what? The spirit of the Lord would do what? Would rest upon him. Praise God. And it says what? What, what can that spirit do? It says is what? The spirit of wisdom and, I mean, there's a book I would highly recommend. The Seven Spirits of God by Pastor Chris Yakulum. It's a very fantastic book. Praise the name of the Lord. It says that what? The spirit of wisdom and what? Understanding. Praise God. The spirit of what? Counsel and what? Might. It says it is the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Praise God. Because when we are able to manifest this seven dimension of the spirit of God, you have no choice but to excel. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the Bible said that it was this same spirit that came upon Jesus. That when there was a circumstance too difficult to solve, the Bible says in John chapter 6 verse 6, he says, for he himself, knowing what, what to do. What was manifested in that situation? It was the spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding. Praise God. There is nothing or there is no challenge that these seven expressions of the Holy Spirit cannot solve. There is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Praise God. Whether it's to build a business or to build, everything is captured here. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is what Jesus has made available to everyone who is willing to accept him as their Lord and their Savior. Because by so doing, the Holy Spirit then comes upon you and you are able to fulfill this thing called life. Praise God. I will share the same quote I shared last week. It says, there is no use in running before you are what? You are sent. There is no use attempting to do God's work without God's power. God's work is not just in, on the pulpit. When you go to the office, you are doing God's work. Praise the name of the Lord. When you are baking or you are cooking, you are doing God's work. Because God is with you in that instance. And it says that what? A man walking without this unction. A man walking without this anointing, a man walking without the Holy Ghost upon him is what is losing time after all. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us get what have advanced in age before we realize this reality. But there's a reason why you are hearing this today. Because you see, the Bible said that the best time to serve God is in the day youth. Praise God. The best time to give, that's why the Bible said that what? That it is better for a man to bear his yoke in what? The days of his youth. Because those are the days of your most productive time. Praise the name of the Lord. And so for you to come to this understanding, Jesus is tugging at your heart. That if only you would open up your spirit to receive this reality, then you are able to fulfill the desires of your heart. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Perhaps there is someone here, you're watching us at home, or you are here and you are yet to make this Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith. This is why he has come this hour to make you understand that maybe the reason why you are experiencing delay and setbacks over and over again is simply because you have not received him. There is a divine enablement that comes upon a man that what every little thing he does. I remember hearing a sermon when I newly gave my life to Christ. And the man of God was preaching. And he said that what? That the essence of the grace of God 
is to color our efforts and cover our errors. That's what anointing does. Therefore, if you want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, or perhaps you have walked with him in times past and you, and you retracted your steps, that opportunity has been made available this morning. And I want you to say with me, Lord Jesus, say, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. I acknowledge that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again. I ask that you would grant me the privilege to walk in the realities of the new creation, even as I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. Everlasting Father God in heaven, for everyone who has made this prayer before your presence, the Bible said that you will no wise cast out anyone who calls upon you. Therefore, Lord, I ask that you will come and dwell in their hearts, make their lives anew, and let the glory return unto you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O God, for in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.